All right. Well, welcome to our third episode of Correspondence, where we are talking to small makers and innovators in the pen industry. And today we've got an innovator in the pen industry, our friend of the channel, channel sponsor, Dr. Brownie. How are you today, sir? Good. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, so there's a couple questions I wrote down. Um, I'd like to start if it's okay with you. And um, just so the viewers know, I actually haven't prepped him with any of these questions. So this is um, 100% off the cuff. So maybe I should have shared these with you. But um, my first no, question yeah, generally yeah. to everybody. Right? I know. Uh, our first question is, how did you get into pens? So um, where, where, what brought you to this journey? So um, when I was in fifth grade, um, my parents gifted me a Parker, uh, 15 pen set came with a, um, slider fountain pen, um, a ballpoint and a mechanical pencil. Um, and I, I, I used that. That was what, that was my first introduction to any sort of fine writing, anything. Um, I basically used that and bought her bottle of, um, Parker Quink Black, fairly common ink, most innocuous, something you can buy at Office Depot, at that time Office Max, um, Staples, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I just used that. And then roughly in 2010, I want to say, 2010, I got my second pen. It was a Parker Urban. And I got it because it was on sale. It was like $35 at the time, which is unreal now. Um, and it came with four cartridges and a bottle of quink. And I got it because I'm like, I, I need, I need more ink. I need to buy a bottle. Um, but I can spend $15 more and, um, get a pen with it. I'm like, yeah, okay. Why not? I'll get that. So, uh, at that point I had two pens and I basically just used Parker quink black for, Oh God, 15 years. This was 2001 when I got the pen, by the way, uh, with the wow. first pen. So 2016, I switched from being a two pen user to joining the hobby space. And since then, it's just been a downhill slope of ever, never ending brokenness and constant. <laughs> Yeah. And it's funny too, because even if you get out of this hobby and you think you're going to get into another hobby to save money, I find I, I spend the same amount of money on all my hobbies, like whatever I get into knives, guitars, um, cars, yeah. anything. It's just, it's all a rabbit hole, but it's all fun. It all is. It all is. And it's, it's, it's really, truly never ending. Um, so from pens, I went to watches because I've always liked watches. Um, and luckily I, I mean, I All right, here we go. Are you a quartz or a mechanical um mechanical guy? <laughs> um oh, what's the best way to answer this without annoying everyone? I think there's a use case <laughs> for everyone. There you go. Yeah. 99% well of the people are going to be happy with quartz. Mm -hmm. Cuz they just won't care. They won't need to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. I personally am a mechanical guy. Um, the sweep of the movements, um, they're all just, it's, it's pretty, it's pleasing. It's aesthetic to see, um, mm -hmm. higher end watches the truly, truly high end watches. Those are all going to be what automatic movements like your Audemars Piguet, your Patek Philippe, or even if you go lower, your Omegas, your Christopher Wards, uh, Grand Seiko's, et cetera. Wow. Yeah. That's something I kind of want to get into is the watch world. So I might pick your uh, ear more about that at some point. Yeah. Like I've got my granddad's old Timex and it's a courtier. Um, and then, you know, I've got, at one point I had a citizen and uh, I lost it um, when I was boating. So, um, but I, I got another mechanical, it's, you know, a cheaper one, but when I was like looking into the different facets, you know, and, and advantages, um, it was interesting because I read in one article, people were like upset with the mechanical watches because they were less accurate and it was like up to, you know, 60 seconds or 75 seconds a day. And I was like, are people really losing their mind over their watch being like 42 seconds off because everyone's got a phone yeah. now. So everyone's like on the same clock, so to surprised. speak. Right. I know, but, uh, you'd yeah. be surprised. So but, um, uh, one of the oh, go ahead. biggest yeah. communities out there is the pen addict slack and the most active and out of pocket channel that i can think of is the watches channel um shout out to watches you guys are awesome um and 
the number of people there that I see keeping track of, okay, I've lost this much time over this time and everything, it's it's kind of shocking to me um, because I didn't realize people would get that deep because then, but I also like understand why, right? Because at the same time, that's how you see when you need to send the watch in for servicing. Mm -hmm. When you start losing that accuracy, like to the point of, um six minutes a day so like i have a watch from 1970s i think it's a grand seiko it was my first big boy watch um and that needs servicing i lose six minutes a day um Man. yeah six minutes day, i could see uh, that, the that. yeah Being the date dial doesn't work um but it, it, it just needs servicing um and th that's but it's a beautiful watch so like i don't care well, let's um, move it back to fountain pens and talk about um, how you are an innovator uh, for our pen enthusiast market, our hobby here. Um, so you run a Discord or you're part of, you know, um, the moderating team of uh, Discord. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, so it all kind of starts in 2017. I start looking for communities to participate in. Um, I was on the fountain pen subreddit and I joined um, what was then an invite only discord server um it's now long dead and that's kind of where i got my start in the pen world outside of just like you know oh pretty i'm gonna i'm gonna buy this um from there there was that sort of collapsed i was invited to be a moderator of another server called pens and friends um that died as well uh after that i started a server called blue blacks and vps bbvp you might hear it called and it's now changed its name to Mount Olympian after I left and all kinds of stuff. And right in the height of COVID, um, I was in kind of a low place and I'm like, I need, I need, I need a community, right? I need a place to hang out. I need people to hang out with. So I'm like, okay, what's a fun pun pen name that I can make that's relevant. And I'm like, well, I happen to be in a pandemic. And I'm like, I like pens. Let's do pandemic. Awesome. So I started the pandemic discord server and I happened to be, I was a former moderator of the fountain pen subreddit. And now I, and then I became moderator again, once someone left. Um, and now I'm the head active moderator there and the pandemic server. It's a server with roughly, Oh, uh, I want to say, 3,500 people, um, maybe more. Um, let me see. Let me see. I, I can get I you can an exact number quick, yeah. right here. I can get you an exact number right here. Uh, I love the uh, the puns too. Um, you helped us. You you actually came up with a name for this uh, sub channel. The you know the correspondence. So um, so well played. The pandemic. I'm I'm really good at the pen puns. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I'm I'm a fairly punny guy. That is amazing. Um, the That's one of the things distance. my wife hates about me, but uh, loves to hate well, about the me. Also. The yeah. dad jokes, you got to have the dad jokes, right? But we've got about almost 3,400 users in there. Um, and it is the official server for the fountain pen subreddit. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a great place, a very welcoming, very inclusive. Um, we try to keep all kinds of controversial topics out of there. We kind of focus on the pens. You want to come in, you want to hang out. Doesn't need to be just pens. We have a fairly active formula one channel. Uh, people talk about art, people talk about keyboards. We have a keyboards role. Um, machined pens are getting big um, in there again yeah. or now. Yeah, that's a new new facet of pens that I'm starting to get into regretfully. Uh, <laughs> Says your wallet, yeah. I, I don't have enough money for all these hobbies. Um, cars, uh, books, we have an entire book club channel. It's just a good place to be. It's a fun place, and uh, I like to think that I've done a pretty good job of maintaining the original spirit of what I started it with. Yeah, I like that there's different sub-channels for um, the different facets of the pen world, too. Like, um, when yeah. I first started, I would browse the uh, the ink um, kind of sub-discord channel there, 
Um, what do you yeah. call them? Is, is it a thread or is it a sub uh, channel? Like how, how do you refer to that? Channel. A channel. Okay. Channel. So yeah, yeah I'm browse the ink sub channel just to like get clues on like, what is the next ink that I should try and get? And then all these people were like writing with them and, you know, showing them off. Yeah. So you could get a feel for all the different things. The vintage uh, sub channel is really cool too, because um, I'm into the vintages. So I get to learn and kind of learn from people who know what's going on because there's not a lot of information online. Yeah, we have a lot of experts there. Um, one of them, uh, his username is Val Tarot. Val Tarot, uh, um, and I, I, we lovingly call him Val Turtle. He's on our mod team. He was one of the founders of the server with me. He, um, he's one of the biggest Schaefer experts I know. Uh, he's he's a true expert. He knows almost everything about Schaefer. Um, he's a tr proper vintage pen expert. There's a uh, much uptime hours. You'll see him in multiple different communities um we've got all kinds of people there um redeem pens the the vintage retailer he's in the server it's it's a good place to be and then there's lots of small makers too like i recently um stumbled upon when i was yeah. writing down a list of all the small makers i could for um, a little video ago um, a couple days ago you know i stumbled upon another small maker on the discord and now he's, you know, helping us kind of get this whole uh, mini database together so people can more easily find small pen makers. Um, so it's just um, all of these creative talents are kind of whizzing about in the Discord. And it's really awesome just to, even if you're not a big participant, just to be a spectator. And if you join and just pop in every now and again, but, you know, you can look at pictures and read. Lurker. It's a lot of fun. We love a good lurker. All right. So now I'm going to ask you if you're OK, a uh, question or two about your recommendation. So you've got a very extensive um, your collection is so big. I, I consider you like a curator to all things fountain pens. <laughs> um, so what would be your recommendation for an entry level or a mid level pen um, for someone who is kind of just starting to get into the hobby or for someone who's been in a little bit, but maybe they're looking for their next step up to the mid level? If you want to dip your toes in. You don't want to have too much of an expenditure. Uh, maybe a couple bucks here or there. Platinum Preppy. You can't top it. Um, it has been my, I'm broken. I need a, I want to try fountain pens suggestion for years. Um, if you want a starter pen that can really show you what it's all about, Diplomat Magnum. I truly think it is the best starter pen out there. Um, nice wet nib. Fairly comfortable to hold, uh, very reliable. I honestly think Diplomat makes the best tuned Yovo nibs out there. Um, it is standard international compatible, takes a converter, um, and reasonably good looking. Uh, let's see, what else? If we're another option that you can go, um, Hong Dian. Let's go to China a little bit. Hong Dian. Uh, Black Forest, I'm not a huge fan of, but any of their N models are fantastic. Their A models, their M models, fantastic pens. Um, I have quite a few of those. Um, and they recently put out a number eight knit, which is bigger. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Um, I think it's nicer than the Jin Hao nib. Um, I recently got the Moon Man number eight nib, so I can't really speak to that yet. And I promptly swapped it out for another nib because that's I'm a prolific nib swapper. Nothing wrong um, with that. Very few of my pens have the original nibs on it. It's it's terrible. That's kind of what I'm planning on doing moving forward too, as I get nicer resin pens from small makers, kind of implanting really nice nibs from, you know, what was it? F, um, FN nibs, FPN nibs? Nib oh, factor, FP yeah. nibs, FP nibs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. FP nibs. Yep. Um, they're a good place to go. Um, it, it, it nice thing about FP nibs is you can get grinds at the same time, which is nice. Um, If you want to order, if you're stateside and you want to order stateside, another person you can go to is Mark Bacchus. Uh, nib grinder nib grinder.com he sells yovo units i think he might have some bach units he has twisbees in-house that he grinds for you and can sell you he's great um let's see step up twisby fantastic you can't beat it um again diplomat traveler esteem great pens okay More. someone who's who's looking for a gold nib what would be gold your nib. you know don't break the bank but you want a gold nib pen. there's three options Platinum 3776, the Century. Fantastic pen. Um, You can buy one used for under $100. Hell, I'll sell you one for under $100. <laughs> um, Actually, one of my first fountain pens was from you, and it was a 3776. It was the limited edition yeah. Shoji, so yeah. 
Yeah, it's a great pen. Um, I, I'm i not a, well, okay. Um, I guess to most people, I am a collector of those, but I'm not a true collector of them. Um, I just, I, I, I like pens. Pilot Custom 74. Again, you can get it used for under $100. Um, and then Sailor Promenade. 14 karat nib, fantastic nibs. Um, great way to break into the Sailor fountain pen world without breaking make because those are expensive. And right now you can get a broad 19 or a promenade for 50 bucks, or you can get a zoom for 70. It's fantastic right now on eat on Amazon. Right. I had a question for you. Um, you keep a list of all the inks that you've used and it is a rather extensive list. Are you, um, okay. If I share that list with people, is that like a publicly accessible list? Yeah, it's a publicly accessible list. Um, I use a, uh, a database called fountain pen companion. It's a fantastic database. It's made by a guy, guy named urban Hafner. He runs and keeps it up to date and it's it's fantastic because it's got a database of just about every ink so many different brands you can add them and uh it's got color so you can go through and look um you can browse other users see what you have in common great for sample swaps and all that stuff um it's great it's fantastic by all means it's an awesome list so thank you for keeping that up um it does help mm -hmm. people you know um, like myself um do you have any you often work with charities do you have any um thing in the works right now for charities that you want to talk about yes yeah, so um i i kind of have a unofficial unregistered group i would say it's not really a charity organization because i haven't done anything with it yet um but i do plan on making it an official nonprofit. um but it's uh it's called sad boy pen club um focus is is just give people i, I work with small makers um, whether it's pens, whether it's inks, whether it's uh, cases, notebooks, whatever, all the proceeds either go to the maker or to a charity. Um, we've done two runs. We're actually in the middle of our second one right now. So the first one was with a Taiwanese maker called F Inks. Uh, they're a machined fountain pen maker. It was a titanium fountain pen. Cool. Um, called their model one um, it was the inaugural sad boy pen club pen and all the proceeds went to a organization called uh, nami national association or alliance for mental illness i remember exactly what it is um, and we raised um 300 300 for that and that, it was fantastic um, i mean not a huge sum but something that i personally believe in um now we're working with a machine pen maker you featured him on his your channel um his name is it's, it's q3d q3d yeah, i love pens. q3d he's great he's great Go um, Quentin, and he's yes. been turning out designs left and right and it's he's a good guy so fun fact about him and i is we actually went to the same undergrad oh no way and that is funny small world yeah we went to the same undergrad and i grew up about 20 miles away from him 15 miles away. It's a, it's a 10 minute drive. Um, wow, he's wow. in a place called Chillicothe. I grew up in Peoria. That's um, so funny. Yeah. So he's a great dude. He's working with me right now on a machine pen. Um, and that is going to benefit doctors without borders. Uh, it's a run of 15 pens and they've all sold out. Um, I was just talking to him today. We had some issues with care coding and he's having issues with numbering and lasering the top caps um, so if you are a supporter, if you are a backer, I apologize for the delay, but it's actually literally just technical issues. Um, I haven't stolen your money. Yeah. And the I money know has Q, already he, gone to him. he's not, he's not going to let it go unless it's like top notch, ready to go 110%. So yeah, exactly. And that's just the kind of guy he is. And, uh, it's something I really respect about him. He's, um, he's prideful. He's got a lot of pride and, uh, in his craft and it shows. The pens are looking fantastic. I've seen the finished product. I haven't seen the laser product, but they look fantastic. Um, they're going to take Pilot G2 refills, and it's going to benefit Doctors Without Borders. And again, I haven't pocketed a penny of this. Um, actually, there were five pens that were unsold initially when I paid for it all. So Nice. Well, that's admirable. We'll definitely put any information we can down below, and then we'll check in with you, um, to, you know, once we're closer to the actual date yeah. for the reveal too. So I've got like 10 or 11 quick questions here for you. 
kind of like a, a mini lightning round, if you will. So I'm going to basically give you like two quick options and then just, um, you know, shoot from the hip and uh, give us give us your first thought. Are you ready? All right. Let's lightning round with uh, Dr. Brownie. Here we go. Number one, eyedropper or converter? Converter. Number two, clip or no clip? Either. Mixing it up, number three, Joker or Bane? Joker. Number four, Vanishing Point or Capless? What's it called? Depends on your country. <laughs> Good answer. All right, we're going back to the Batman. Keaton or Affleck? Keaton for Bruce. Affleck for Batman. Oh, okay. Uh, multifaceted uh, answer. Nice there. All right. You can only have one nib. Is it going to be fine or broad? Broad. Broad, baby, broad. Always broad. All right. Next one. Here we go. You can choose any um, Grail fountain pen you want. Is it going to be from Europe or Japan? Europe. All right. Next one. Shimmer or Sheen? Sheen. And here we go. Bach or Yovo? Bach. All right. And to round it off, this one's a little bit more dynamic. The best Robin. Is it Grayson, Todd, Drake, or Damien? Both of us are huge Batman fans. I actually wore my Batman shit for our interview here. So Now, as Robin, it's going to be Tim Drake. As a character, Dick Grayson. Because, because Dick Grayson is Batman, is Bruce. Had he found a way to conquer his trauma? Yeah, Dick Grayson like the lighthearted Bruce. Bruce yeah, he is Bruce perfected, and he and you know incorporates actual friends into his life. You know, no, it, yeah, and he's a he's a truly good person, and you see it as um, you see it in the Grant Morrison run when Dick becomes Batman. He's yeah, just great. that was a that was a brilliant part of the run too when uh yeah it was um dick as batman and then damien as robin they had a very different dynamic than um bruce and anybody else because it was much more lighthearted and um helping yeah. one another more so um but yeah great answers yes yes um dick will always be my favorite dc character always so uh, that actually kind of ties in i was going to ask you what in your opinion is like one of the best batman runs my personal favorite arc is hush but yeah, okay. I think Snyder. The Snyder run? Yep. Snyder Capullo was fantastic. But quintessential Batman is going to be Morrison. Grant Morrison. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I, I That's what really got me started into collecting Batman. But I don't want to get too far away um, from our fountain <laughs> pen world. Let's say we've only got a couple minutes left. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Is there anything else you want to share? Anything else um, coming up down the line that's exciting for you? Yeah. Um, so uh, a couple months ago, I want to say beginning of the year, I was contacted by Tom Otto at Goldspot Pens. The Pandemic Discord server will be having a collaboration with Goldspot Pens, and we will be putting out a pen, hopefully next, hopefully this coming month, hopefully sometime soon. It's going to be an Opus 88 Minty. Those of you who have been in uh, the Pandemic Discord server, you have participated in the voting to establish the material and the trim and the colors, and it's it's going to be a great pen. It's going to be a good pen. You guys, uh, I, I I recently received um, teaser photos of it unpolished, and it looks amazing. I haven't shared it with the server, and kind of want to keep it that way. I want to make it a surprise for them to see, but it looks good. That's awesome. Well, we'll definitely put links to that down below once that's available, too. And we'll absolutely check back in with you um, as time goes on. I want to thank you for being a channel supporter, channel sponsor. Uh, when I started doing YouTube stuff, I didn't really kind of have any idea of the mm -hmm. where and the why and um you know you kind of came out of nowhere and you're like hey you know you're getting into fountain pens i'll i'll toss you a couple so you can get an idea a feel for them and maybe talk about them but i just wanted to thank you because there there was no back and forth like you're not getting paid for you know donating pens for review or anything this is all just something that you do out of the goodness of you and you want to kind of spread our knowledge of the fountain pen world so i want to thank you for everything yeah. that you do 
both for this channel and then for the fountain pen world at large in the pandemic, being a moderator on Reddit, uh, which is really big here at 300,000 users, 300,000 users or so on Reddit now. So. Big. And of course, your charity work too. So thank you for all that you do, Brandy. When it comes to your channel and helping you start off and loaning you pens, those of you who have been in the fountain pen world, you guys might know I have been an unofficial sponsor of Held in Rights as well. Um, so this isn't my first time. So it's truly, truly my genuine pleasure to share what I have, what I've learned. Um, I we've all I've been meaning to do an interview with Helen as well, um, but it's just it, timelines have never matched up. And now she's back to Netherlands. It's a whole other issue. Um, that said, um, I'm Dr. Brownie, Deepak Sabrawal, um, head active moderator of our Fountain Pens. And when I say active, I mean that loosely. I'm mostly on the Discord side of things. Have very capable people running the fountain pen subreddit i don't need to be there thankfully um i run the pandemic discord server and um former podcaster and you should you can see me all over the place um i have a few collaborations personal collaborations coming up that i'm really looking forward to sharing eventually with you um and uh it's gonna be a good time it's gonna be a good time and i i truly enjoyed doing this thank you again brownie for joining us for episode three of correspondence and thank you again for the sub channel name here loving the pen puns my keep pen, them coming my pleasure that was a fun one